Now I've got a bit of a challenge this week. Now in previous videos we have looked at camouflage and we've looked at larger scale type drones for more complex cam patterns. But when it comes to doing more complex shapes, how can you still get that detail in the camouflage but still make a really visible tabletop mini that's easy to read and you've not disrupted the shapes and the, the surface and everything else? And that is the challenge for today. So first of all, I want to put the colour down on the base because it makes life a little bit easier later on. Now this pot is almost empty. Yeah, it's kind of the last dregs of the paint and it's quite almost dried up, which makes it quite nice and easy to use almost as a texture paint for basing up models. So similar to what I did with the drones, I'm going to pick out the basic shapes that I want to have as a cam pattern with the sand yellow from Vallejo Model Air. It's quite a nice thin paint. So I'll take a couple of coats. So with the magic of YouTube, I've now put two thin coats on and they're now dry. Now don't worry about being too incredibly neat in this bit because you can touch it up later on. For the very base layer of the camouflage scheme, I'm going to use a very thin wash. Now I'm putting it on quite loosely, quite roughly, because it adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of variation into that camouflage scheme. But also I'm going to try and cheat slightly. I'm going to see if this works. Is I'm going to try and almost, almost use it as a shader. Right, so a graduated faded shade going around. So I want to make the darker parts where the shadows will naturally be a bit darker, if that makes sense. We'll, we'll see how it works out. So the first pattern color to go on is going to be a green. And rather than doing a straight color, I will try and build in the shadows and the highlights into the color within the pattern. It's going to be a bit tricky, but I want to see how it works. Then on the wet palette, I'm making up a gradient from that very, very dark green for the shadows all the way through to that very bright light green for the highlights. So I'm going to use that reference picture that we found on the, the drone video. And I'm just going to pick out and start creating some of the shapes for the green. Now some of it is very defined and some of it kind of fades out. So I'm going to use a little bit of water in places to fade out that green almost right back down to that very light sandy colour. So as I go I'm trying to almost paint that volumetric lighting, that, that sh the shapes into the camouflage paint by using that gradient from very dark green to very light green. It's quite tricky, A, because you're thinking about creating like random shapes that fit the pattern, but also because you're trying to, to recognize where they are in the model to get lighting right. So basically, yeah, it's free painting a pattern by hand, but free painting a, a complex pattern where the color changes ever so slightly based on the lighting. It's something I haven't really attempted before, so that's quite an interesting experiment in itself. So having got that base green down, next bit I'm going to do the exact same principle of graduating that very dark to very light, but with a brown. Now with this one, I can't make the highlight colour too light, because it'll lose its effect and it will then just merge into that, that background sand colour. Now to make this camouflage pattern work, you need to keep the brown quite a sharp colour. It doesn't really fade out very much. Now the final colour in this pattern is that very, very light brown, almost beigey kind of white. Now this is quite a sparse, almost like little dots of white. That's the basics of the camouflage down. Now one final thing to do to make it really work is to put that pin wash into all of the recesses in those panel lines. Now I found that that pin wash is absolutely critical to this scheme because it redefines the shapes. Even though you have that disruptive camouflage pattern, if you can redefine the shapes by using the pin wash, it makes the whole thing a lot more readable and you can recognize exactly what you're looking at a lot easier. Now I haven't gone into the detail of the principles behind what I'm doing here, but if you haven't seen it yet, I've gone into it in a lot more detail with the Painting with Movie Magic video. And I'll put a link for that down in the description, and along with the one for the drone which goes into painting the scheme in a lot more detail. Whilst this was an interesting experiment, I think it's worked, and as a model, it looks great on the tabletop. But what do you think? Any thoughts, ideas, please drop them down in the comments. If you liked that, if you found that useful, please bash that like button and share it across your social media. And I'll see you for the next project.